Hello everyone and uh, welcome to learning how to use your multi-needle. My name is Gail Mikashonis. I work for Quality Sewing and Vacuum in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I also work in their uh, Puyallup location in person um, and you might recognize me from the Sew Fun that we do at Quality. So um, we're here to talk about the 10 needle. We are, a lot of the things that are covered here can be done on a six needle, a 10 needle, no matter what model you have. Um, we have the newest PR 1055 today, um, but we're going to go through threading and what comes with it and everything from top to bottom. So to start, um, we're going to see what's in the box, right? Now hopefully you have taken your machine out of the box, unpacked it. Um, there is one thing of note that I would like to share. Um, if you have not done anything with your machine yet, there are two little brackets that fit right here and right here, and they are a nice cautionary red color. Um, they are screwed in here to make the machine not move in transit. You want to be sure that you take those screws out and remove these before you try to use the machine because it will get angry at you if you don't. Okay, in the box you have uh, the machine itself, you have a set of hoops. There are four hoops that come with it and you also have a couple of, these are the arms, okay? Um, the hoops fit into the arms, the arms uh, fit into the machine. You also have a box of all sorts of goodies. There's some oil. This is one of those machines uh, that you will have to oil. There are some screwdrivers, tweezers, scissors, uh, spool caps, extra needles, things like that. What I really want to concentrate on for screwdrivers um, is this one, and it looks like a little Allen wrench, and that is going to be for changing your needles. We are going to um, change some needles today, so um, I'm going to keep that one out and put the rest of them right here. Now, I have this machine all threaded up, but I am going to unthread it so you can see how we start from scratch and uh, thread the machine. Now, I'm going to work on needle number 10 which is the one on the far left. These are numbered one, two, three, and all the way up to 10. So I'm just going to cut that thread right back here and pull it all the way out. All that hard work. Okay. There are numbers on all of the coordinating ports that you have to go through. So I'm gonna walk around the machine here for a second and get that thread off the cone. I'm gonna go through number 10 up here on the tree in the back and I'm gonna go through 10 on the tree in the front. All the even numbers have two holes to go through. The odd numbers only have one. Well, anyway, some have two, some have one. Then I also have um, a number 10 right here. So I'm just looking for anything that has a 10 on it. I'm gonna have a little hole right there. I'm going to have a little hole back here. Now you're gonna have lots of practice doing this with um, needles number one through 10, but good news, once we get this all done, I've got a little trick uh, so you don't have to re-thread every single time. So unless you break a thread way back or um, run out and not pay attention, then you don't have to do this every time. There is a screw right here that I need to get up under. And then this is my tension. And there are little marks on the head of the machine underneath each of these wheels. Um, and you want to follow those arrows. This is going to go around a full turn and a half, go around this peg, go around this peg, stick under another little screw, and then it's going to be like this regular sewing machine, down and back up through the take-up lever, all the way down through number 10 down here, and then we're gonna look at the needle area. Now, the good thing about having this on video is you could have paused at any time and uh, follow along with me and then start it up again. Okay, once we get down here, 
uh, we need to hook around this little wire. And the opening for the wire, the guide right above the needle, is gonna be on my side, on the right hand side. So I can go hook up around that little wire. Now there is a little tool that makes that much easier. But, you know, this is video, so mine's missing, of course. So I'm gonna get down on my knee and get that up around that little wire. And now comes the fun part. Over to the screen, we have some physical buttons on the screen and we have some digital buttons. The far right button is my needle threader. This is a two part process. Um, the first one, I'm gonna to touch the needle and it's gonna push a little needle threader uh, through the eye of the needle. Um, but right now I have it on needle number six. So I just threaded needle number six. And remember, I'm trying to thread needle number 10. So in order for me to advance all the way over to needle number 10, I have a button right here on my screen which has two needles and a little hoop. So when I touch that, I have all of my needle numbers over here. If I touch 10, it is going to move the machine over to needle number 10. Now when I push that little needle threader button, it's gonna go through number 10 right there. I'm gonna hook the thread from the right to the left under those two little wires or those two little metal hooks and I'm going to tuck it in that little um, lever on the left that's going to let uh, the thread get caught. I'm going to bring it up and around the blade right here. Okay, That's going to hold it and when I push that a second time it's going to pull that thread through the needle and uh, needle number 10 is threaded. Okay, I'm going to give you a minute to uh, get yourself all threaded up and then we will talk about that quick tip. All right, now let's say that you have to change thread colors and you didn't want to go through that whole process um, again. I can take my scissors and I can cut my thread way back here by uh, the spool, put on my new color. Tie a knot. I'm going to take the old thread and the new thread and I'm just going to tie a single knot in it. And then I'm going to grab the thread right here by the eye of the needle and I'm going to pull until that knot comes out. So here's my two threads and here's my knot. So that whole thing, that whole path has been rethreaded, and then all I have to do is thread my needle. Now if you'll remember, we're um, back on that screen that has the two needles and the hoop. I had cut needle number one, so we're going to move the machine over to needle number one. Push that little button under there, and I'm threaded. So that was so much faster. Okay. Um, embroidery thread uh, is the thread that you want to use on this machine and uh, you can adjust your tensions here um, just by dialing up these little dials. Now this is not nearly as sensitive as the tensions on a normal sewing machine so you have lots of little uh, lines. You can actually crank these around uh, multiple times if you need to get it tighter. Um, a usual or a regular sewing machine has the thread actually in between two tension discs and it's pinching the thread. These are little wheels that spin and as I tighten this it just makes the wheel turn less but the thread is never really pinched so uh, the tensions do work a little bit differently. Okay, once we're all threaded we need to talk about our hoops. So, I have the largest um, single hoop for this machine, the 7 by 14, or 7 7 8 by 14. And this comes in two pieces. We have the inner ring and the outer ring. So the outer ring is going to go on the table first. And that is going to be um, 
the base for my fabric. Then I need a piece of fabric and I need a piece of stabilizer. So in this case, I have a piece of tearaway stabilizer. I'm gonna lay that down in my hoop next. And then I'm going to put down uh, my piece of fabric. This one actually looks like a shirt. And then I'm gonna press the inner ring inside the lower ring. The nice thing about these, um, this machine has a camera, so you can see the collar. Um, so it really doesn't matter if I hoop exactly straight because I'm going to use the camera to place my design. Okay, I am going to push until the two hoops meet. If I need to loosen them a little bit, I can. Um, until they are flush. Okay. Then I want to go back with a screwdriver and tighten those, but on a multi-needle it's very important that you do what's uh, called countersink. So I'm going to push that outer ring up just a little bit so that I can see the edge of that inner hoop just a little bit. If I don't, this outer ring can catch on the machine. So I'm going to get that all the way countersunk. And then I'm going to take a screwdriver and tighten that up, nice and tight. All right, so there's my hooped fabric. This particular hoop takes frame number A. They are numbered or lettered A, B, C, etc. And I'm going to mount this uh, to the machine using two small screws. Now you might note I also have a large screw right here. That is for adjusting the size of my frame. Get the second screw out of the machine. Now there's lots of little holes and pins and all sorts of things on this frame to try to line up. So I have a little slot right here. It is a hole in my frame, but it's not really a circle, not quite a square. It's kind of a squoval shape. I am going to put that on uh, the pin that's on the right hand side, and then everything else uh, will fall into place. I've got a hole right here to put a screw. tighten that all the way and then I've got a spot on the other side to put a screw and I'm going to tighten that one as well. Now actually I'm going to loosen that one just a hair and then my really really large screw over here on the left is just a little bit loose so that this will slide back and forth and I'm going to figure out what size I need for each hoop. Because if I have a smaller sized hoop, my uh, brackets are closer together. So I need to slide my frame in to accommodate my smaller hoop. So this one's gonna be extended all the way. And then I'm gonna tighten that screw and uh, the small screw at the same time. To get my hoop in the machine, I'm going to tuck the top side underneath the two little brackets and I'm going to push until that snaps into place. Okay, I'm all ready. I need to pull up a design and um, anytime I want to go home, I'm going to use the little home screen up here. This shows my built-in stitches, my frames, um, some other decorative stitches that I can pull in, um, monograms, fonts, and uh, frames.
frames are for making um, uh, quilt patterns around uh, sashing on a quilt or something. Um, before we get to those, there is one thing I forgot. We also need to talk about the thread on the bottom. The bobbin thread goes in here. This has the removable type bobbin case, L type bobbin, and you're going to want to use embroidery weight bobbin thread. You will go through uh, enough bobbins, you're going to want to invest in pre-wound bobbins. And these are going to go in uh, to your bobbin case just like that. And then your bobbin case is going to snap in there. There's some little notes here about how to oil your machine. Uh, you will want to oil it on a regular basis. Okay, now that we have our bobbin thread in, we're good to go. So. I'm going to pull in a design, and this one is a nice uh, butterfly design. Okay, this is a built-in design from um, the previous model. They have it in this current model. I actually had occasion to stitch it out on this beautiful jacket. Uh, but because I was doing this design on a dark jacket, and it's kind of a dark design, uh, there is a feature in here to actually audition my fabric so that I can tell whether my design is going to show up or not. So we'll get to that in a minute. So let's say that I have chosen this design to stitch out. I have uh, four different screens that I can advance through. The first screen was my home screen. Let's go back just a second. There's my home screen and it's uh, where I choose my designs. I can also pull a design out of memory. I can pull something off a USB stick, which is, uh, there's a slot on the side, any standard USB stick, I can put in the side of the machine and uh, pull designs off of. There's a second slot below that, and there's a little um, icon for that. There is a direct connect to the computer. There's a place to put a cable that I can plug into my computer. Or I can actually access a design through the Wi-Fi or through the internet. Um, Wi-Fi to my machine, my computer. Okay, so let's go back to our butterfly. This is the second screen. This is where I can um, decide that yes, that's the butterfly that I want. Um, I can add more things to it. I can um, change the size, rotate, uh, do all sorts of things with my design. I'm just going to go to the next screen real quick and then we'll come back and uh, show you what all those do. After I've edited my design, um, this will let me move it around, rotate it. Um, it's kind of a layout screen. And then I can go to my embroidery screen. My embroidery screen is where it tells me where the threads are and um, where my threads are on the machine and what colors I need to use in what order. Okay, if I want to get out of this screen, uh, I'm just going to hit return. Oh, I got to close that little guy right there. And the button on this side is usually going to um, have you retreat, and the button on this side is going to have you advance to the next screen. So now I'm going backwards. I'm going to go back to edit, and uh, we can look at some of the things um, that we can do. Uh, because of some of these features, I'm going to choose a smaller design. Anytime I want to go back home, I just go back to the home uh, little house and say, okay, and I'm back uh, to here. Okay. Also in here is um, some fun little designs, and I'm going to use this little medical caduceus design because I know that I can get more than one of them on a screen at one time. Okay. In um, the edit screen, I have a size button. So I can change the size of this. Um, there are two buttons right here. One is to change the size without changing the number of stitches. If I make it bigger, it is uh, not going to add stitches. I can only go up and down about 20% with that button. The next button over is going to allow me to add stitches as I make it bigger, 
or reduce stitches as I make it smaller. So here I can go down to 50% and I can go all the way up to 200%. So I've got it 200% bigger. Now I might want to rotate it. I can do 10 degrees to one direction or the other, one degree, 0.1 degree, or 90. Then I'm going to add something to go with it. So let's just add some font. This is the ABC. I'm going to delete ABC Medical Company. ABC right there and I can take that font and I can make that bigger smaller rotate it and I can also make it um, an array which oh, is down here on the bottom they've moved it since the last machine um, so array is gonna let me uh, curve that so let's just do a little bit of a curve here so So now I've got the, the ABC. Let's say I don't like the ABC right there. I can go ahead and delete that. And I can take that um, caduceus, I can mirror it, have it go one direction or the other. And I also have a fun little button right here where I can say, let's have two of those, or three of those, or four of those. But I've made it kind of big, so let's make it small again. All right. Let's add one to the left, add one to the right, and now I have three of them. Okay. Once I have these, I can uh, move them around. I can use my fingers. I can also use my um, stylus. And a fun feature that they've added to this one is I can actually go in here and I can add stippling to the outside. So if you're a quilter, this is great. With one single button, I can go in and add um, that stippling stitch all the way around the outside of that uh, design. I can choose my hoop size. I can choose how far away from the design I want those stipple stitches to go. Um, and I've done a quilt block just like that. So I want you to go in and play with these buttons right here. Um, there's many more features to this machine, uh, but this is gonna get you started. Um, but I do want to show you a couple things about placement. So um, we're going to go back and get rid of the stippling stitches. Let's see. There we go. And let's just take these three uh, caduceus and we're going to put them on the front of our little shirt over here. Okay. All right. So. I want to know where the design is going to fall in my hoop. Remember, we have our little shirt hooped right here. So I'm going to put my hoop into the machine. Hoop is in the machine. And this machine has a camera, so I can take a picture of what my hoop um, and the fabric in my hoop looks like. So that is going to be this feature right here or this button it is uh, looks like a page with a camera so if I touch that button it's going to actually move the machine and take a photograph of my hoop So you can see, uh, here's the pocket on my shirt, here's the collar, here's the buttons down the front of my shirt. Um, my little guys are kind of sideways right now. Let's go back to edit and eh, let's knock it down to one. And we're gonna rotate him. Oh, he's upside down. There we go. 
and then I can move him right there and he would be a nice little left chest design maybe on a uniform um, but I can put it exactly where I want it to go All right. now I've chosen um, the embroidery screen so this is telling me that the different colors in the design there's five colors um, it wants to place them in uh, these four places and also on number nine it's not lit up but number nine is the brown so then I would put my threads on uh, the appropriate spools and I can broider this out now let's say this has uh, number three which is currently yellow right here um, but my orange that I want to use is really living on number four right now and I don't want to cut the thread and re-thread um, and all of that because the thread is perfectly fine just where it is I do have a button in here again if I am done um, putting the threads where they're going to go here I can close that screen I have some buttons down here at the bottom and one of them is a spool with a little uh, magic wand so if I touch that I can tell that first color I don't want it to really pull off of um, spool number three I want it to pull off of spool number four so I can just change that to a four and then I can go down and say I have my brown on um, a different spindle now I don't have any brown up there right now but let's say that I'm just going to use number nine over there that one's still nine anyway okay number four number four is blue my blue is living on number eight which is right over here so I can put in number eight and so on now this is only going to keep this information um, as long as I use this one design then it'll go back to the normal colors so I can do it all over again if I want now let's say I started stitching out this design and I break a thread uh, by the way to get it to start stitching I'm going to push the lock button that is going to let my uh, green start button um, flash and I can just start it and it will start stitching just like that but let's say that I break a thread and I really need to back up or I want to advance um, I have uh, some buttons down here one of them looks like a needle with a plus or a minus if I touch that I can advance by one stitch, 10 stitches, 100 stitches, or 1,000 stitches, or I can go back the same number of stitches. Now, let's say the power goes out, or somebody turns off your machine, or you need to leave. Um, when you power down and come back up, it's going to come back right where you left off. Um, but let's say that you're going to be gone for a while and you're not sure and you are about uh, 3,000 stitches into a design that's 3,296. I have another little button here that looks like a 10 key, um, like a cal calculator, and I can actually input um, exactly what stitch I want to go to. I hit set, and it will skip to stitch number 3,000 of 3,296. So I can go exactly um, where I want to in this design without too much trouble. When I finished, I'm going to say OK and uh, just hit that lock button and hit my green button and go again. Now, if for some reason I want to stop before the thread um, has come to the end of the color and I want to cut the thread, I'm going to use my scissors. Uh, but this is one of those uh, buttons that you also have to unlock uh, before you can hit the scissors. So it's going to cut that thread for me. Right, then I can take my um, hoop out of the machine. Okay, well I hope you have uh, lots of fun um, using your embroidery machine. Um, we're going to do a couple subsequent videos of some of the special features of the hoops and things like a cap driver that you can put on this machine. Um, so feel free to go look at those as well. Um, but thank you for joining us. And any questions, you can um, look us up on Quality Sewing and Vacuum at QualitySewing.com. All right. Thank you.